Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. So I promised myself that I would never do an unboxing video yet here I am doing it because I am super excited about these porcelain trays and I want to give you some info on using porcelain palettes in your watercolor painting. So here are four reasons why you want to use porcelain palettes or plates for watercolors. Number one is more mixing room. If you don't like your tiny little palettes that come with your set or the plastic ones that you've bought at the store and you just want a lot more space and especially space that's not broken up into little sections, these plates or trays are perfect because they just give you so much more room. These particular ones that I just got are about nine and a half, nine and three quarters of an inch by 11 and three quarters of an inch. So that gives you a lot of space to mix your paints. Number two is no separation or beading of the actual watercolor. So when you use a plastic palette or a metal palette, unless it's really old and you, it's already been used for a while, if it's brand new, it'll look like this when you put your watercolor on it. You can see that the water is just separating into separate little areas and it's not being like held together. So that's really annoying for artists and sometimes you don't really care about that if you're doing something little, but if you're mixing a lot of watercolor, you want to actually see how much you have mixed instead of the separation. So using a porcelain palette doesn't give you that separation. So here you can see side by side. On the left I have my plastic one and on the right I have my porcelain one. So you can see that the porcelain one is so nice and smooth and the watercolor is just kept together in one spot. It's not separating, going into little tiny droplets. So that's the difference and that's a huge plus when using porcelain palettes. Number three, it doesn't stain. Porcelain doesn't stain, guys. You can just spray it with some glass cleaner like I'm doing here or just water and just scrub it a little bit with some paper towels and it'll be totally nice and clean. You can even throw it in a dishwasher and let that do the work for you. So the difference between that is this plastic one right here. It's stained and it doesn't really want to come off anymore. Some parts do, but some parts are just like super stubborn and won't come off. And one mistake I made on one of my other palettes right here is I used a magic eraser, which is pretty abrasive. You don't really notice it, but it is, and it scratched up my palette. And now the paint is in those scratches and it won't come out at all. Number four, no need to go to an art store. I know most craft stores don't even sell porcelain watercolor palettes. So buying a porcelain plate or a porcelain serving tray at a different store, like a home store that has plates and mugs and all that kind of stuff, that will save you a trip to an art store if you don't have one in your area and you don't want to buy one online. So this is a perfect option for those of you who don't have art stores nearby. All right, guys, so let me tell you about these particular ones that I just got. They are from Sur La Table. I paid about $11 for these because they were on sale, but you can see they are $15. They are porcelain, microwave safe, oven safe, dishwasher safe, so you can actually use them in your kitchen. But they are amazing. I like that the lip of these is very small compared to this plate that I got at Target where the lip of the plate is very high and then the middle of the plate is just a little bit raised. So you can see at an angle right here that the paint always settles right there in that little area between the lip that goes up and then the middle of the plate. And it's really bugging me. So I've been looking all over the stores for a tray or a plate with super low edges and like really flat in the middle. And these new ones are perfect for that. So the first thing I do when I open these up, there were just they were just covered with like paper dust and stuff. So I just wanted to clean them up. So I just got some all purpose cleaner and I'm just gonna give them a little bit of a wash here just so they're not dusty from all that packaging. So after cleaning is all done, I have to do something to the back of this because 
porcelain is not always super smooth on the bottom. If you have a nice table and you don't want to scratch it up, you have to put some felt stickers on the bottom of these so that you can just move it around your table or your desk and not ruin the finish because I've done that before and I learned my lesson. So now every time I get a porcelain plate or palette, I just immediately stick these felt stickers to the back. So I just got this big felt sticker. I'm just going to cut it into four little strips and tape it right to the bottom. So do be careful though if you do end up putting these in a dishwasher or even if you're just soaking this in a sink and washing it, those are going to fall off most likely. So just have some extra or take them off before putting them in your dishwasher. So how am I going to use this? I'm probably just going to squeeze the paint right onto the tray and just treat that as my little palette and go from there. If I have little removable trays of paint like this one from other palettes, I can just remove it and just put it right there on my tray and start mixing my colors so they're nice and close to me. But I'm not really worried about it. This is for larger pieces, for larger mixing areas. So I'm pretty much just going to squeeze the paint right out of the tube and use it like that. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and you got some ideas on why porcelain palettes are so exciting to watercolor artists. And I'd like to know what kind of palettes you prefer. Do you like big giant porcelain plates like this one or little metal palettes or plastic palettes? What is your favorite? I'm always interested in palettes because, of course, I have an obsession with collecting them. So give me some ideas, what are your favorites, and I'll see you next week. And don't forget to subscribe so that you don't miss next week's video. Bye!